Welcome back to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. And so we start off with the first leg of our conversation, which is uh, that objection by Northern governors to the element in the tax reform bill, which is, um, you know, the derivation formula for the distribution of VAT. Now, the contention over uh, the VAT Act is not new, going, you know, as far back as I can remember, at least 2020, 2021, when uh, former governor of River State, Jason Wiki, took the FIRS to court, and the contention at that time was who should collect. So it's always been who should collect, but this time ar around, it's about distribution. So what's inside this tax reform uh, bill, but particularly, uh, let's look at their position by the Northern governors to the VAT distribution formula, which is derivation. And join joining us to have this conversation this morning, we have Mr. Bak Makdi Shehu, who is a public affairs analyst who joins us via Zoom. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program. And we also have Mr. Nick Aguli, an accountant who joins us from our Abuja studio. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming through at this time. Good morning and good morning, good morning, to, our and good morning to our viewers. And so Mr. Shehu, I'm going to start with you. I'd like you to articulate, uh, first of all, to set the tone for this conversation, what you... <coughs> think about the opposition by northern governors to the derivation formula for the uh, VAT distribution? Well, thank you. Good morning. I think there are two legs to this issue. The first leg is that uh, the northern governors suddenly woke up from their slumber. I don't know when they started uh, thinking about the north. The north has been decimated no voice from them. The North is insecure, inordinate silence from them. The North is pauperized, inordinate silence from them. The North is bewildered, confused. Everything collapsed, no word from them, except when the issue of redistribute of income just comes in and now they rediscover their voices. They have now reinvented themselves, Rediscover themselves and reawaken themselves because money is involved. I thought their priority should have been the issue of security, poverty, decay of infrastructures, and building a better northern society. They are fighting and talking now because it's going to affect them directly. Because the money being given to the state is at the mercy of all governors. They are the lords of their own states. Nobody speaks strong about them, otherwise he becomes an enemy. That is the one leg of it. The other leg is that uh, in a democracy, there is nothing ideal in a democracy. Why? Because it is an activity dealing with conflict, how it arises, and the way it is resolved. Compromise the way and manner it is arrived at. Decision making, how it is taken, power, how it is acquired and used to the maximum benefit of the people. Where you have a democracy such as that of Nigeria, you don't, out of your own personal thinking, bring in a policy that will further polarize the society. When you are saying, bring to the table, what you bring to the table is what you get. That is about consumption. It's a value added tax at every level. For example, Dangwata will pay his VAT in Lagos for virtually everything. But who is consuming Dangwata's products? Virtually everybody in the society. So when you say, because Dangwata is paying his tax in Lagos, therefore Lagos brought a chunk of tax, therefore Lagos will get by much of the tax. I think you are just being simplistic. You are not about practicing democracy. Or you go to River State and say because Shell and other oil producing companies pay their tax in, in Rivers, they also, uh, Rivers will get chunk of the tax. I think this is not democracy. This is selfishness. This is greed. And this is not the way to build a society. This is the way to create more enemies, to create more fools, to create more tribalists. You can never build uh, citizens by doing this selective approach of gathering wealth and distributing that wealth. 
All right, let's take it to Mr. Agule. Uh, Mr. Agule, you are the accountant, and so you help us uh, explain how it's supposed to be maybe in other climbs. So the way it is, according to the VAT Act, uh, Section 40, the distribution is that whatever is collected at VAT, VAT is, of course, is a consumption tax. So 50% goes to the state and the FCT, 15% goes to the uh, federal government, while 35% goes to the local government. And now, with what we see, uh, in fact, I see it as a situation where we've been spoon-fed by nature's providence, so all of us are just looking for a pool of fund, and this, everybody's guilty, whether from the north or the south. <laughs> so as soon as there's a bit of a movement that affects how money's come to us, uh, we begin to scream. Uh, so that's why you, you, you see the issues with the, with the south and now with the north. So I want you to help us from a professional point of view. Um, should consumption tax, how should it work? Because the model looks like the proposal is that the consumption tax should not be uh, as it is collected from the headquarters, not from where the products are consumed, which is what the North is saying. Look, uh, this model is not going to work because most of the headquarters of these companies, they are not in the North. They are in some other places. So if you begin to do it this way, we'll be shortchanged. Do they, do they have a strong point? And thank you very much uh, for the question. So to put it in the right uh, perspective or to set the contest, you actually stated correctly the distribution as we have it today, which is all of the VAT that is collected and net of the collection uh, commission that is paid to either FIRS or the customs, 15% uh, goes to the federal government 50% uh, goes to the states and the FCT, and 35% goes to the local government. Now, there's another bit to that. It says 20% of what is shared to the states and local government is based on derivation. Now, in the new bill that is now before the National Assembly, the VAT Amendment Bill of 2024, 5% of the distribution has been taken off the federal government. So the federal government now has 10%, and then the states have 55%, and the local government still maintain 35%. However, in this bill that is before the National Assembly, the derivation, the share of the states and local government, the derivation has been moved from 20% to 60%. And this is what is now causing the issue. Meanwhile, even though the northern governors have taken up on this point, complaining that the 60% derivation is too much, it is not actually a matter for the northern states alone. This is a matter for all states in Nigeria where economic activities are not happening. So I can understand from the framers of this bill what their objective is that they want to encourage states and local governments to begin to generate economic activities in their jurisdictions so that they can have a bigger share or bigger pie of the VAT collections. However, there are issues. And my co-panelist has already started to take on, on some of the issues. You know, he, he's already talked about the production centers in Nigeria, like Lagos, is where you have all uh, the ports, you have uh, most of the ports, you have uh, the factories, the imports are happening, and all of that. But the consumption is happening all over the state. So in as much as the presidential tax force on fiscal reforms have put this bill, I think the, the, the devil is in the detail. The detail is that, as uh, the, the leader of that uh, tax force says, um, Mr. Tao Oyedele says, how are they going to ensure that they can determine the points of consumption so that they can, live, they can allocate the tax? How would they determine that? For instance, I'm in Abuja. I, I have loaded my, my phone. You know, the, the telecoms headquarters is in Lagos, and they are most likely going to file their VAT returns in Lagos. So how would the presidential tax force, in terms of this bill, now know that I was in Abuja when I consumed this service, and so my VAT 
should be accounted for for the FCT so that the FCT will now have a share of this 60% uh, derivation uh, principle. So I think that is where the, the lack of clarity is, is coming from. And the Presidential Tax, uh, tax Force on Fiscal Reforms, they need to do more engagement with stakeholders across the nation. It's not just the northern states, like I said. Mm. Um, I'm going to follow up on that a bit, um, a, a bit later on, on that clarity. But let me bring it to Mr. Makdi now. And um, uh, your candor is well appreciated about um, northern governors waking up from the slumber. Uh, and if you look into the um, MBS report on IGR performance for states, you know, the states at the bottom of the ladder in performance in that regard is the northern states, Kirby, uh, Jigawa, to mention but a few. So I want you to chart a course for development for the North now. In your view, uh, what would you propose to be um, the way forward for Nigeria's North to come out of the challenges of, and that, you know, those were the issues discussed at their recent forum, um, under development, poverty, insecurity, out of school children, such that um, they can now become economically viable and uh, VAT distribution would no longer be an issue. You see, unfortunately, substantial number, majority of the Northern voters are docile. Docile for so many reasons. Ignorant for so many reasons and uninformed. They are politically uninformed. Otherwise, how can you surrender your franchise based on 500 Naira? based on a thousand naira, based on sentiment, based on naivety. This is the crux of the matter. We don't, we don't audit people. We don't do character audit in the north. We don't query people. People of questionable character and questionable circumstances will simply spring up. They come from Abuja, from Lagos, from London, from somewhere. They sink into the arena with money, clean the ticket, and desert the society. Secondly, when you have a governor of a state <clears throat> thinking of building an airport in a state with six million out of school children in a state where the entire health sector has collapsed in a state where you have graduate unemployment <clears throat> in a state with high insecurity that governor's intention is not in the best interest of society or check any northern budget and there is no exception Look at the amount of money dedicated for what? For administration in the governor's office, for traveling and transport in the governor's office, and for entertainment. Contrast it. There is a governor with 20 billion naira admin and overhead costs in all budget. Yet in the Ministry for Health, he has only 4 billion naira. In the Ministry for Youth, he has only 500 million naira. In the Ministry of Women Affairs, he has only 750 million naira. If that governor tells you that he is interested in youth development, in job creation, in the welfare of the women, he is just deceiving himself because people are not fools. As long as there is no concrete plan on ground to develop the North, and it is possible because people that presided over the North in the past that had little money, much, much lower than what we are collecting now, we're able to cut a course. We're able to have a focus and a foresight and a plan. But our current crop of northern politicians, most of them, they have no plan. Their plan is only on their own chest, in their own minds, in their own bedrooms, among their own cliques, cattle, and carbon. They don't look at the larger society. What they look is at the myopic, the smaller part of the society that pleases them. The larger society can go to hell as long as they continue with this attitude. For that long, we will be crying foul about VAT. We will be crying foul about location, location, location of federal government projects. When they are on their own, they can do a lot. If a, a pregnant woman dies in a local government village as a result of dilapidated health uh, 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 infrastructure, what has that got to do with the federal government? If a child cannot go to school, in a mm. local government, primary school, what has that got to do with the federal government? If the feeder roads are not good, what has that got to do with the federal government? They need to wake up from the slumber, do the right thing, 
at the right time, at the right moment, before their names are written in the book of infamy. All right, Mr. Sheol, I will stay with you for a bit because um, I, I, see, I see your point. So uh, from what the accountant, uh, Mr. Aguilar, has explained, it looks like the thinking of the framers of the law or the proposal. I know that Mr. Ayodele Taiwo had posted yesterday that they will engage the northern governors so that some of these gray areas will be sorted out. And, um, uh, and I hope that we're going to get the outcome of that conversation. But I listened to Governor Abdullah Isule of uh, Nasarawa State yesterday on our sister program, and he did mention that, look, what they want is let status quo remain. But it looks like the thinking of the framers of the bill are saying, we want ease of accountability and tracking as well as promote subnational enterprise. But is it not also seeing this as some sort of fiscal federalism or restructuring through the back door? Is that a perception? It, it, it's just clearly the point. What we are saying is that uh, there has been this call for restructuring. But for the North now, if I were to speak for the North, I would not speak for restructuring. I would think of giving people what they want. Yoruba nation wants a due republic. In the name of God, give them a due republic. This is 21st century. We have a right to choice. Biafra wants Biafra. Give them Biafra. Give every other nationality what they need. Because as far as I know, the relationship is sound. There is geometrical increase in suspicion across all expressions. The trust is not there. Suspicion is not there. And people want to develop at their own speed. If you want to go at the speed of rocket, please, you should be allowed to go at the speed of rocket. If you want to go to at the speed of snail, Go at the speed of the snail at your own peril, at, your own, at the consequences coming to you. But for now, if anybody is thinking that federal, uh, physical federalism is the solution to Nigeria, he is not even understanding the geography, not understanding the history, not understanding the mathematics, not even aware of geometry and the geometrical implication of what they are asking about federal, uh, uh, physical federalism. What we should have is we should have sub-nations among Nigeria. Let every try, let every reason get what it wants. Short of this, our children, our grandchildren will abuse us because we are going to leave behind for them a cancer, cancerous, that will defy every chemotherapy. So, Mr. Aguli, I'll come to you now for that clarity. And, uh, you know, over the years, States like uh, Lagos have been the epicenter of the collection of VAT, and uh, according to reports, they generate as high as 55%. Uh, but what comes to them after distribution is 10%, and for that, they've been allocate, uh, advocating for you know a form of legislation that will uh, address this seeming injustice in um, the VAT distribution. So, what would you? Uh, propose to be a correction of this devil in the detail bit, you know, of the distribution for the VAT, such that it would be more even. Would it be um, restricting the federal government to collecting only import and excise, such that this derivation principle uh, would be more even uh, for states that generate more VAT to get the equivalent of the VAT that they generate? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and so uh, this was the case that was filed by the River State Government, uh, wherein they wanted each state to collect the VAT in their state. And they actually won that case at the Federal High Court, but the appeal court uh, uh, threw it out. I wonder if they are going to the Supreme Court. However, the, the, the problem here is that in the current distribution, 20% which is what uh, is going to the state and local government, is made based on derivation. Ostensibly, the northern governors are happy with that. Uh, the, the problem is that that 20% is now being upgraded to 60%. So perhaps that is where there could be room for negotiations. Uh, if it is not 20%, perhaps, which is too low, it should not be 60%, which is perhaps too high, Therefore, where will be the meeting point? But for me, the, the, the important thing we should be discussing about in this country is two principles about taxation. Number one, are the rich paying their fair 
amount of taxes. Because taxation has to be that everybody, depending on your income, should be able to pay your tax. And I know that if you go to all of our markets this morning, the market women are being taxed. The people doing Okada business, the ones doing both and all of that, they are being taxed. But are the rich of Nigeria also paying their taxes? That is question number one. Question number two, what is government doing with these taxes? Because whatever is being generated as taxes needs to reflect in terms of the benefits that citizens are getting. And if citizens see how their taxes are working, they on their own will even be more encouraged to pay taxes. And we're not doing that. And then the other point is that we're taxing a small economy, an economy that is running on 3,000 megawatts of electricity, of which we continue to have a grid collapses. As we speak, I don't know if electricity has returned to northern Nigeria yet. We should be looking at going back and building an economy, a big economy, such that when the economy grows, even at the current tax rates, we will be able to generate a lot more money and fight less on the distribution of this revenue because everybody will have enough. I mean, as, 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 as I'm speaking here today in Channel Studios, I should be able to leave these studios and go to uh, Ara Igu Square and take a train at the terminal to any of the 36 states in Nigeria. But right now, I can only do that going to Kaduna, why are we not building rail tracks all over the country so that we can grow the economy, build the economy? Why are we uh, building airports, as my co-panelist said, instead of doing agriculture? If you go elsewhere, every single land that is available is cultivated, you know, either with three crops or with cash crops. So these are the kind of conversations that we should be having. And the northern governors, just like every other governor in Nigeria, should be thinking about how they can boost the economic activities within their states. And if they do that, there are other taxes like PEI. There is no question about who collects PEI. PEI is paid to the state government. And they will have enough of those revenues to continue to execute their project. Uh, Mr. Shell, let, let, let me come back to you. It's difficult not to agree with you when you said that because this money thing has touched the governors, they've started reacting. Uh, because you can also bring that to the issue of local government. Uh, all of a sudden, state governors now have time to organize local government elections across board. There are states that we didn't have, a, we didn't have elections for a very long time. That because of the deadline given by the federal government and how it impacts the pockets of uh, the administration of local government, which is uh, a proxy of the governors in most cases, with what we're seeing, uh, all of a sudden they now have time to organize local government elections. So it, it's difficult not to place this around the issue of uh, fiscal performance, fiscal responsibility, as well as the politics around it as well. So do you see this as having some level of political consequence uh, in the long run, as far as this issue of VAT is concerned, if it's not properly sorted? Because we're seeing a lot of anger in certain quarters. It's on record. There is no state in Nigeria that conducted a free, fair, and credible local government election. It's just a fraud. They are rushing to do election because it's going to affect the income of the state uh, as far as local government uh, allocation is concerned. They are after the local government fund, not after the credibility of the election that will bring in the local government uh, election, uh, local government executives into office. That's number one. Number two, I think she, people should understand what is called the incidence and impact of tax. That is a tax, and it has an impact and an incidence. The impact is on everybody who consumes, like my brother said, the telephone services, who consumes the fuel, who consumes kerosene, who consumes everything produced. And it means that everybody is a victim of tax because the incidence may vary in, in, in ratio and proportion, but everybody is a victim. If everybody is a victim, there should be a way of ensuring that that victim also enjoys the benefit of him being a victim by consuming a particular product. Therefore, let us look at, can we distribute that based on population? The South will cry foul because of the Northern population. Can we distribute now that based on collection? 
the North is now crying foul because they don't have any productive activity taking place in the North. So what do we require? We require a middle cost. What do we require? We require to drive wisdom. From where? People like St. Augustine, the author of uh, City of God. City of God is a book written by St. Augustine to tell you how nations are built. By what? By giving and taking, with pity and compassion, with coordination, with synergy and linkages. You don't just wake up in the morning, make a policy that will rather polarize the entire society. Drive wisdom. From what? From the, the, from, from the book written by St. Augustine, City of God. Drive another wisdom. This is to the governors and to the ministers, to the senators, to everybody in governance, to Tinubu, to everybody. Go and read the book called Confession, written by the same author, St. Augustine. Confession is about looking inwards, asking yourself honest questions, even if they are rude, and try to answer them. Confess what you have done to humanity. Avoid inflicting injury. Establish a linkage with God. Treat humanity with dignity and respect. Otherwise, you are not a worthy leader. Mm. So, Mr. Anguli, as we reflect on those powerful <laughs> words from Mr. Magdi, uh, in the same vein, do you foresee that this could be another round of uh, constitutional disputes? Because if the governors are ob northern governors are objecting, do you uh, foresee that? Look, those who believe that they are uh, the, the golden goose laying the golden eggs should also protest and get what rightfully belongs to them. So are you uh, projecting another constitutional dispute that will arise from this? Yes, indeed. There, there is going to be uh, a constitutional uh, crisis uh, because, like I said, even though the governors, the northern governors, are the ones that are now pushing this narrative, it's affecting all states that are not producing, even if they are in the north or south. Because if you look at states in the south, like probably like Ondo State, uh, yes. the, the states in the um, uh, southeastern part, in fact, down in the south, you only look at River State and Lagos State as the main states that are getting VAT remittances paid to them for economic activities generated across the nation. So it will not be long before other states will also join in the fight to say that this uh, distribution using 60% derivation is rather too high, too lopsided uh, to the advantage of states where headquarters or companies are operating. Because like in Rivers, that is where most of the oil companies are operating. And then in Lagos is where the head offices of like banks are operating and things like that. And especially now that we have... Uh, the fintechs, and we have technology and all of that. If I do a transfer, as I'm in Abuja here, I do a transfer on my bank app. Who is going to take the tax? It's the bank. Who is going to remit the tax? It is the bank's headquarters in Lagos that will remit the tax. So this is why the Presidential Tax Force on Fiscal Reform, we need to come with more details on how such a transaction can be determine that for me, who is in the, in the FCT doing a bank transaction, they can actually trace that transaction to the FCT and allocate that tax collected, that VAT to the FCT. These are the kind of details that are going to cure the agit agitations. But if they don't have this kind of clarity, I, I, I don't think uh, we are going to see an end to this soon. All right. Uh, we hope that with this conversation, we've been able to provide a little bit of clarity that will inform the conversations in the coming days. We'd like to thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming through. We've been speaking with Mr. Mahdi Shehu, a public affairs analyst who joined us via Zoom, and Mr. Nick Aguli, accountant, who joined us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time on the program. Thank you. Thank you, and have a nice day. And from this point, we're still staying with the subnationals. This time, we're looking into their account books to see how they've performed in the last financial year, being January to December 2023. Uh, those who have been looking into those books will be joining us for a breakdown. So stay with us. We'll be right back.